we are going to create an array in Access from a table and some special operations on it and export it into Excel. This pops up when you open the database. Export, use Control E. That message box was created in an auto-executable macro. You have to call it that way. And all it says is message box export. Closing that one. Uh, the shortcut was created with the auto keys macro, which is done with a sub macro that you create from action catalog, a sub macro. And then control E is the name of that sub macro, and the run code is a run sub, that is a function that we are going to create soon. Don't forget the open and closing parentheses. What we are going to do, maybe for some a little too much, so you want to know more about arrays. And we are going to use a two-dimensional array. If you use the read in preserve statements, then you have to make sure that only the second dimension is expandable. So only these elements can grow. This cannot grow if you use the preserve statement, otherwise it doesn't matter. The problem is that when you grow it this way, that Excel has them reverse transposed. The, the many ones are in the rows usually, more records, and the fields are in the columns. So we will see how we solve that. And then if you feel a little confused by all that VBA code that we are going to create, I recommend this CD-ROM that you can find at genesispc.com and it spends a lot of time on arrays and collections. So wh what are we doing here? We have a very simple table. This is all it has in it. And we are going to export that into Excel, but we will add some operations in the array so as to multiply the hourly rate with the hours and we are going to calculate how much is the uh, overtime pay depending on how many hours you were hired for. So we are going to work in module 1 and we declare an array either before we do anything else, that's what they call a global array, uh, you have to do that if you do operations on in forms and stuff like that. You want that array always to be available whenever the user is working on something. Otherwise you declare it later. I, I did it later because in my case I'm just using it only in this subroutine. Then we created the function run sub. Run inside that function the export array subroutine. Here is the export array subroutine. I declared the array here, a few other variables. Make sure that you have activated the DAO.DLDL library, DLL library, sorry, that is a typo. And you do that for tools, references, and make sure that that library is open. Declare a DAO.record set. We are going to set ORS as a pointer to the current database, and the record set table employees in a snapshot version. We are not going to change anything in the table. We count how many fields we have. The count is always one more. Then actually when you start at a zero, you have to subtract one from the count. Uh, to find how many records we have, we have to first move to the last one in the record set and then move back to the first one. Then we know how many records we have, otherwise the record count will be zero or one at the most. Then you have a choice. You, we declared the array here. Now we are going to dimension it with a read -in statement. And you can set it to a fixed amount. We have six fields. We are going to add two calculated ones and we subtract one because arrays are zero based. So we need seven here. And how many there? I records, that is the record count minus one. You can also do the read -in statement in the loops that are coming. I did that actually. So I'm going to put in the first loop, read -in, 
but then you have to use the preserve keyword, otherwise it empties all the previous entries. Array 7, and this time we set it to 0 the first time, 1, 2, 3, up to i records. Then we do something similar for i fields, and we put in array j, it's the number of fields, comma i, and we set that to whatever was in ORS fields j. Then we add two calculated fields into the array. I did very simple ones. I put in a new, in the next field, i fields plus 1. That is not a field that exists in the table. We take the fields hours times the fields hourly rate, and we put that calculation in that field of the array. Then we do one more calculated field. But in this case, I want to find out how many hours did we hire you for. For 25 hours, 30, 35, or 40. If that is the case, then we, then we add to the hourly rate and times 0.2, times 0.3, times 0.4, times 0.5. That's an operation that access cannot do in a field easily. So then we move to the next one. Don't forget to add this one, otherwise we stay on the record of the record set that we happen to be in in the first loop. We move to the next one, etc, etc, etc. Next i. Now just to show the array how it was populated, I'm, I'm putting it in a message box. So I loop through all the records in the array. How many? We want to find the, the, the last element in the array in the second dimension. That's the number of records. And then we do a second loop for the fields. You bound the array in the first dimension that holds the fields. And we put in a variable as message what was already in there. Then we format that array j, i, very simple, as a number, if there is a number in there. And then we add a tab, a vb tab. Only do that if we haven't reached the end of the record yet. So i, i, f is the function. If j is the same as u bound, then put nothing, otherwise a tab. And then after the first record, we add a carriage return. We go to the next line. Next i, and we display the message box. This, this doesn't make much sense probably, but it just shows you how the array worked. Now we are going to export the array to Excel. So we need a reference to the Excel library. Tools. References, make sure you have Microsoft Excel Object Library open. Declare three variables of the Excel application. Create an object of the Excel application type. Add a new workbook to the collection of workbooks. Set OWS as a pointer to the active sheet in that new workbook. And we look for all the fields to put the headers in there, way on top in the first row. So we take from the first field, zero, the name, the second field, etc., etc., etc. Then we add a new field for the weekly pay and a new field for the overtime pay. And we are going to retrieve all the elements from the array. Be aware that in Excel a sheet has more than a million rows. So if, if you have more rows than columns, you have to make sure that they fit in there. Okay. And then we uh, make sure, but in the array we had put the records in the second dimension. In Excel the records are usually in the first dimension, so I need the transpose function. 
You can do this directly. OWS range from cell A2 up to the last cell in the last column and apply that array. This one will work fine. The only thing is that you cannot do much formatting. If you want to do much more formatting, you have to look for the two dimensions of the array. I'm just showing you here how you would do that so I can format everything nicely. Otherwise, it will not be nicely formatted. Okay. And then a few cosmetic things. We ought to fit all the columns of all the cells. We make all Excel visible, otherwise you won't see Excel, so now we can see what the result is. Let's find out what this does. Control E. The array was displayed in the message box. And now it's going to put everything into Excel. Here is Excel. And it did a perfect job. They put in row one, it puts the field names, and it did all the calculations here. They just don't look nice. So let me show again this one that explained what we were doing. So this is adding more records, but the number of fields stays the same unless we re we set everything at the beginning with extra fields. Again, as I said before, this is a speed course. If you want more information on Access VBA, you need that CD-ROM to be found at genesispc.com. It has helped thousands of Access users like you.